Okay, welcome uh, to this uh, uh, very basic tutorial on toxic genomics. Um, uh, this is put together by uh, myself, Roland Grafström, and uh, co-worker Pekka Kohonen, and uh, also an another person who worked earlier on these slides is Rebecca Cedar, and uh, Pekka and Rebecca has made these slides. And uh, I'm uh, a professor at the Institute of Environmental Medicine at Karolinska Institute in Stockholm. And this is how I'm connect connected to Toxbank. And I'm also a, a guest professor at uh, VTT Technical Research Center in Finland in Turku. Um, toxic genomics uh, is built really on systems biology. And uh, uh, about 10 years ago or so, there, there was a lot of discussion in the toxicology field uh, about transforming the science totally and using technologies that, that actually been used quite much already in other disciplines, uh, primarily cancer biology, for example, the study of cancer biology. Yeah, and um, uh, this article here, uh, uh, a very informative and easy to read article, is uh, from Collins in Science. And uh, it sort of it summarizes actually very elegantly the main points of uh, applying systems biology uh, to transform toxicology. And as you're here, toxic genomics is a very integral part of that. And before getting into this slide, I'll, I'll try to, uh, uh, I will today uh, describe for you the ideas of systems biology, the various measurements. And uh, it will become clear, I think, how, how the omics uh, field and uh, toxic omics is central uh, when you apply that principle to toxicology. So um, um, if we have the classical ways uh, of uh, studying toxicology, we have, do have epidemiology or we do have animal experiment and they're usually rodent tests which are used to uh, um, uh, elucidate and provide data whether a chemical is toxic. And there's of course a very limited capacity uh, uh, with that. Uh, epidemiology usually finds results afterwards, uh, after humans have been exposed and not proactively. And uh, we can only do so many uh, rodent tests uh, per, per time, uh, per year. So, uh, so we do need alternative methods. And the idea is uh, shown here in this slide is that you can either have alternative animal models like uh, zebra fish, the fruit fly, or worms, or uh, cell-based assays, and primarily human cells are considered to be the tools then. And as you can see when you look at the, uh, the figures here, uh, with the cell culture models we can do many, many experiments uh, uh, um, per time unit, and high throughput screening technologies are available um, that, that we can do to assess toxicity in cultured cells. Um, so, and this slides as well then, uh, points to the fact that we can also measure many things. We can measure uh, that by omics technology, which can really look at, uh, uh, give a very broad picture of what goes on in, a, in a, a living cell. Or we can have many separate assays of specific functions or enzymes or, or regulators in cells. And this can all be put together uh, into a, uh, a view on critical toxicity pathways. And due to the mass of information here, we're going to need bioinformatics. It's going to be computational analysis. And particularly if we do omics analysis, then this is where toxic genomic comes into the picture. And, and this will be part of, of the way to work. Uh, two very important things here, uh, uh, and the key things of these slides, is that instead of predicting from, um, uh, uh, from the classical means of doing epidemiology or, or rodent test, we shall be able, by the pattern recognition and the wealth of information gathered in this way, to predict uh, human health risk. And the other important thing is that of many chemicals, and now we're considering hundreds and thousands of chemicals, yeah, that we can find the, the typical representative very toxic chemicals and we can prioritize those for 
the few uh, animal experiment that we still feel that we have to do. But ultimately the idea with this whole idea of systems biology or systems toxicology, uh, which is something that we can call this, is we can term, term this field, is to actually totally be able to predict. And, and the idea is naturally to minimize or totally uh, avoid doing animal experiments. And uh, you can see also below here, and this really now sets the stage for this short presentation, uh, we talk about immediate human relevance. Naturally, if we measure human exposure, we measure, uh, analyze human experience, we do have an immediate human relevance. And the challenge to the scientists here is that you have a high throughput in this end, and you have to, how can you do this high, high, high throughput in the best manner in that you can be, uh, you can have a very high human relevance of what you're doing. That is where the field stands and uh, is really a challenge. So um, anyway, now if uh, we accept that idea, uh, and, and I think there is a large understanding and interest in the scientific community for this, then uh, we will have a chance to uh, uh, using the systems toxicology concept that uh, was outlined on the previous slide, this should be able to help something that we can term a bioidentity of a chemical. And uh, that means that we understand uh, uh, very broadly and get a full picture almost of how a chemical uh, affects in affairs or disturbs uh, living systems. And, uh, and uh, this slide here actually um, uh, summarizes uh, all the way from the exposure to the, the true molecular initiating event considered to occur in a cell, maybe the most critical, uh, over organelles, cells, tissues to organ responses. And uh, uh, also conceptually, this whole analysis, uh, if done in the future in, in, in good ways, should be able to give information to individuals to inter-understand into individual variation, gender differences, and aspects that we co uh, couple with how a population responds to a chemical. And key words uh, for the toxicogenomic fields and the systems toxicology fields are here, terminologies. Toxicity pathways is usually uh, uh, a term. Another term, mood of action. Uh, and the other term uh, that is there's a lot of work going on uh, is to try to see a complex pattern of different effects uh, being summarized into an adverse outcome pathways. So, so this is an introduction to, to the uh, toxic genomics field. If we take a step back then and uh, go into systems biology and, and, uh, and what is that generally uh, uh, it's really like science has been uh, performed and, and uh, uh, done uh, over, over a long, long time. But the basics are that uh, we can start in many places in this cycle, which I term the systems biology cycle, and so do many other scientists. And we can start here, for example, we have an hypothesis. We have an experiment that we then can design uh, to uh, uh, look into our hypothesis, uh, uh, and then we, we choose a biological system. And, and as you realize with, with, uh, with what we're aiming for uh, in, within TalkSpec, this is naturally towards uh, using cell cultures. And we decide how we should do this experiment, how we should handle the sample, how we analyze it. And we have a multitude now of very broad technologies that are uh, important in systems biology. They're very information rich, and, and it comes back to, to the first slide that we started off with today. And, and, and then they have to be analyzed. This all data has to be managed, stored, uh, uh, and it has to be processed. In, and it could be processing of uh, aspects of the chemical structure of all the biological, the bioidentity information that we're gathering for a chemical. And uh, this lecture, uh, uh, basic lecture, will discuss a bit of this uh, because particularly here with all these omics technologies, this is where toxicogenomics comes in. And we do need um, bioinformatics. We do need a lot of tools to handle all the data and to inter interpret the data so that we can 
uh, see whether uh, um, various processes, functions, or components of cells are altered, whether on molecular networks or other particular pathways uh, coupled to an effect, whether we can generate biomarkers or gene signature biomarkers uh, uh, for, for modeling and understanding uh, what goes on uh, as a result of the chemical exposure. And uh, also very important there are those other terms that we had, uh, toxicity pathways, modes of action, and, and uh, activity structure relationships, disease associations, and so forth. So this explains systems biology, but coming back to my first uh, starting sentence for this slide, uh, the science has been always been done this way. We always had hypotheses. We had some kind of measurement, and, and we had this circle, and we generated data, and, and uh, this is how it goes on. The, the big difference now is that there is the technologies are so information rich, and that's really what meant that that uh, makes systems biology different to the former biology, and this then has to do with what's on this part of the slide. Yeah, the technologies and the handling and the absolute need of bioinformatics and storing all this data in, in ways in databases so that so that it's retrievable for for, for, for the further work. 